Uh, so don't get me wrong. Even though I don't have any myself, ever since becoming an uncle, you never really think about it or notice it, I guess, until it happens. But I have come to realize that there are a lot of chickens in the world. And I mean, it truly opens up your eyes if you are someone who doesn't have a lot of little kids in your family, or if your friends don't have kids, because I have slowly but surely started to realize that the earth is just one big ass daycare. And because of that old man rant, you would be right and safe to assume that I was someone who was not in the target demographic for Inside Out all the way back when it was released in 2015. Wait, 2015? Damn, Pixar really marinated and sat on this one. Well, obviously that worked out and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that me not being a part of the target demographic at the time was a bad thing. And in reality, I was the one who was missing out on what I now realize was an actual great movie and a set of movies that if handled right are more than likely going to go down as classics for this generation. I mean, I am talking about being on par with animated franchises like the Shrek universe, the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy, the Kung Fu Panda franchise, the Cars trilogy, the Toy Story universe, and what will eventually be a Frozen trilogy. And even though Slander is one of my favorite pastimes, again, since I am not in the target demographic and not in the core audience for these type of movies, I haven't been someone who has had a pitchfork in hand over all of these years and someone ready to call Pixar washed or a studio that was quote unquote losing its touch. But in that same breath, it's definitely no coincidence that since the release of Inside Out back in 2015, the only movies that I personally have seen from Pixar are sequel movies, you know, The Finding Dory, Incredibles 2, and Toy Story 4's of the world, which is only 3 out of 12 movies in that span, all 3 of those being the top grossing movies from that span. Well, before Inside Out 2 hit theaters, another sequel movie that just absolutely shattered those feats. A feat that not only I didn't expect, but Hollywood didn't expect. In a way, we're experiencing a reverse Hollywood effect where usually Hollywood always expects the highball price just to be disappointed when the lowball demand gets thrown back in their face. But this is an instance that even has Hollywood looking around like, wait, are we making money? And after watching Inside Out and Inside Out 2 pretty much back to back, I definitely understand the appeal and demand for this movie and movies like this in general, which makes it even more interesting for how long they let this IP fester. Inside Out 2 is pretty great and actually funny as hell, a movie that I was never bored at during the entirety of its runtime, which was only like an hour and a half and honestly only felt like an hour the way kid movie pacing is, and as little knowledge as I have about how kid movies work nowadays, so I don't want to use the phrase like, return to form, but Inside Out 2 felt like a movie that I would have watched as a kid myself alongside my family. A highly digestible movie filled with quippy jokes, characters that stay consistent, intelligent writing for subconscious life lessons for kids, tackles themes that still hold true all the way until adulthood, and slick and creative animation that you've only come to expect from Pixar at this point no matter the movie that it is attached to. Again, an IP that definitely has the makings to become a classic of this generation. And while I feel like I don't have to highly encourage people to go see this movie like I had to do with Furiosa, so depressing. You definitely should go watch this movie because now we're about to get into... Inside Out 2 still follows our favorite girl Riley as her life has really taken off in San Francisco. She's made great friends, is super smart with high ambitions, and is the captain of the hockey squad that just so happens to find themselves in the championship game. When Riley shoots the winning goal and impresses the high school coach of the Firehawks, Riley and her friends are invited to a three-day hockey camp that has the potential to hold enough weight to set up her future in hockey and a varsity spot on the team. But when Riley is blindsided with the bad news that her best friends won't be attending the same high school as her, Riley finds herself caught in a situation where every move, feeling, interaction, scenario, thought, or emotion she feels gets ramped up all the way to 100. Oh yeah, this is one of those type of movies. So with Riley hitting that stage in her life, it's only natural that she gains more emotions. In this case, we're looking at anxiety, envy, embarrassment, and boredom, emotions that are the new head chefs of Riley's head and don't feel the need for joy, the other emotions, as well as Riley's old sense of self. 
a Loki tree orb looking thing that Riley with her emotions, thoughts, bonds, and accomplishments have manifested and crafted over the last 13 years of her life. With anxiety taking over Joy's position, Joy and the others are banished to the shadow realm of Riley's mind. But with anxiety threatening to take over Riley's life, Joy and our mates band together to again tackle the ever-growing labyrinth of Riley's mind in order to save and return Riley's old sense of self, as well as learning some lessons for themselves along the way. So I kind of started to hint at it in that plot synopsis, but one of the best aspects, and I believe one of the core reasons why these movies are so engaging, even as an adult, is really because of how intelligent the character writing is. In a Hollywood landscape where it feels like the majority of writers can't even write their own relatable or interesting protagonist, and at a time where we as an audience have been faced with an epidemic of poorly written villains, the fact that Inside Out doesn't really have an antagonist, but instead decides to focus its character writing not only for Riley, but our emotions as well into well-crafted characters is nothing short of impressive. And maybe I have that backwards, who really is the protagonist of this franchise? And I can't begin to explain or even know how hard or well-attuned you have to be towards your craft in order to pull off such a feat, but I can tell you that it is truly appreciated from an audience's POV. But there is no doubt in my mind, yet again, at least for me personally, Joy, and you know what, I guess I can say all of our core emotions this time around are still the highlight of the movie, with disgust, anger, and fear all getting their time to shine with their own personal characters on their adventure with Joy. With sadness being the main emotional focus of the first movie, it was a fun and refreshing twist to watch all of our other core emotions interact with each other on more than just a helping Riley level, and while that doesn't mean that the new emotions introduced take a backseat or anything like that, they will definitely be welcomed addition to the franchises and our emotions that are here to stay for the rest of Riley's life. I guess I'm just saying it could have been easy to push our already established emotions and characters into the background in order to heavily focus on the new emotions and characters, and in a way, that's on me, because I have come to expect utter laziness and lack of creativity or brain cells when it comes to the majority of Hollywood writers, but our core emotions are still the selling point of the Inside Out franchise, and sold me they did. Overall, as I just sound like a broken record, if handled properly, Inside Out is 100% a franchise that could end up going down in the Pixar Hall of Fame and could even reach a feat in title of a classic animated franchise. A franchise and a movie that could live on and have a lifespan that is truly timeless. Introducing, exploring, and teaching lessons and themes that are honestly for all ages, a relatable protagonist that the target demographic can follow and latch onto, animation that is pretty much just eye candy at this point, pacing that makes the runtime feel like it was cut in half, in a good way, and quirky, upbeat, and fun characters that genuinely elicit actual laughs and just good vibes for how corny that sounds. But I mean, you can just see how much money this movie made in just its opening weekend, and with word of mouth and repeat watchings because of kids, this is gonna be a big win for Pixar. So in a ranking system, or I guess you can say a grading system that is relatively new, that eventually won't be new. We started this in 2024, and honestly, I would say it's going pretty solid so far. I would go say watch some of those reviews, even though you're just gonna see where I rank a lot of them here, but I mean, you can still go do your boy a solid. But with that being said, Inside Out 2 is cinema on the small screen, and is a movie that I'm sure will live out as a Disney Plus warrior for a long, long time. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should go say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.